we come to a new chapter called equilibrium okay now it might seem as if as if this is something which we have not come across or maybe maybe it is very rare but it is not okay all the equations that you have seen till now all the chemical equations they are actually an equilibrium equation okay now what do we mean by equilibrium what do we mean by equilibrium equilibrium in a reaction is when the amount of reactant and the product they do not change with time they do not change with time fine so so equilibrium and 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 if you if we look at it then we feel as if it is a static process nothing is changing right but actually it does not happen that way fine it does not happen that way it is actually a dynamic equilibrium okay it is actually a dynamic equilibrium so for example let us let us come back to something that we have already studied or or for those of you who do not know that let there be a bell jar okay and let there be a petri dish in which we have put some some water in which we have put some water we have seen that we we know that while studying the vapor pressures of of liquids we know that this this bell jar will be filled with water vapor after some time okay how do i know that there are water vapors water vapors are what they are nothing but the but the liquid water in the gaseous form so how do we know that there is there is vapor there by looking at this this is a this is a pressure gauge so after some time you will find the pressure gauge gauge reading going up now how is that possible we come back to the legendary ideal gas equation pv is equal to nrt and what happens somehow temperature is the same r is a universal constant v i'm not allowing to change still the pressure is changing so the only way it can do so is when n goes up right how can n go up it means some of the water here has evaporated and become and and come into the gaseous state otherwise there is simply no other way no more gas is entering this so so that is the way n can go up and it is this increase in n which is making the pressure go up fine why should why should so many molecules go into the vapor phase that we have been studying that is due to evaporation okay now after some time we'll find that that the pressure gauge has stabilized and it is not changing its reading that means the number of n the number n has also become a constant now it looks like a static equilibrium but is it a static equilibrium the answer is no it is not a static equilibrium the reason is the reason is the reason is there are still some molecules there are still some molecules say like these green ones which are turning into vapor from the surface of of water and 
there are certain red ones the red molecules here which strike the surface of of the liquid and they are turning into into liquid that means they are going into the bulk so this is nothing but a dynamic equilibrium so so equilibriums equilibriums are normally a dynamic equilibrium normally a dynamic equilibrium okay now let us try to understand it so so even though things are not changing they are still undergoing a change now what is happening why the pressure is not going up because at any given moment of time at any given moment of time moment of time as many molecules as many molecules are getting converted are getting converted from the liquid to the vapor phase to the vapor phase as are converting from the vapor to the liquid phase right okay so we represented something like this liquid vapor fine or maybe if it is water then from liquid it is converting into a gas that is liquid gas equilibrium okay these are half arrows and they point in both the directions one forward another another backward telling us that as many at the, the the conversion from liquid to gas and then from gas to liquid is the same fine so that is one of the examples of dynamic equilibrium okay now let us try to understand we have we have a reaction which is like this okay we we have already studied that this is called a reactant and this is called a product now if you have a way to measure then you will find that reactants start getting consumed they start getting consumed and start getting converted into the product so they start getting consumed so their concentration goes down their concentration decreases while this is the product which starts getting formed starts getting formed so its concentration so its concentration goes up okay so the concentration of the product goes up and a time will reach when we'll find that that this and this they have become a constant okay now to us it looks like a static equilibrium again but it is not a static equilibrium at that point of time as many a plus b are getting converted into c plus g as c plus g is getting converted back into a plus b okay so instead of reaction becoming this it is actually shown by by two half arrows pointing in both the directions okay so all the reactions that we have studied till now they are they are not a unidirectional reactions they are actually they are actually an equilibrium reaction even the reactions which are complete towards one end 
that means where you will not be able to find even even small amounts of of the reactant there too there is such minuscule amount of reactants that you are not able to detect it okay so so maybe maybe say 10 to the power minus 9 moles that you will not be able to detect but at one point of time the reaction does get converted into an equilibrium reaction like this fine it becomes this now many of the processes in the nature and in our own biological systems are governed by equilibrium reactions that is why we are trying to study the equilibrium as a separate chapter in all its right okay so so what happens let us say let us say our own biological system okay biological system say the oxygen getting attached to the attached to the hemoglobin to the hemoglobin what happens it gets attached and then reaches the different parts of our cell okay similarly the carbon dioxide in our blood that comes back and diffuses goes back to our lung and from there we exhale it right now a particular amount of oxygen goes into our lungs okay our lungs and from there there these molecules move into the blood we know there are very thin capillaries running across that very richly supplied and and due to that there is a diffusion and an equilibrium gets established in your in your capillaries okay from there it moves to the different cells say say then then it becomes thicker and thicker okay and and then again starts becoming thinner and thinner and it goes to say a cell a cell like this there also the transfer is across the is across the plasma membrane and that is again a diffusion process and it stops when there is an equilibrium established there in the meanwhile the carbon dioxide which resides inside that diffuses into the bloodstream and the bloodstream carries it back to the lung right for oxygenation fine similarly similarly say co carbon monoxide in atmosphere its concentration will decide at what point it will start forming 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 a compound a stable compound with our hemoglobin and and at that point the carriage of the oxygen will go down and the person may may fall unconscious and eventually die if not taken proper care of okay so there are there are so many systems all in fact all the systems all the reactions that we have been accustomed to writing as as a single arrow are nothing but a double arrowed equilibrium reactions fine okay <clears throat>